Non-Stop Spider-Man issue number two from Marvel Comics. So this is another Spider-Man series that just came out this week. Well, not just because this is issue two, so obviously there was an issue one. But yeah, this is like the third or fourth one that came out this week. There's a lot of Spider-Man comics. So yeah, Non-Stop Spider-Man. I'm going to have to say that that title is a lie. <laughs> this is not Non-Stop Spider-Man. This is Start, Stop, Start, Stop, Start, Stop, Spider-Man. So in the previous issue, there's there was a student. His name was Austin. He went to the same school as Peter Parker, and he died from overdosing on a drug called A+. And the drug is basically a performance-enhancing drug, and it's supposed to make you like smarter. It's not like physically performance enhancing but more of a mental performance enhancing and um yeah austin he died he overdosed and uh other people have also been overdosing and so in that issue spider-man is basically fighting uh these people that kind of look like street samurai and he gets a call from his friend kale and she said that she did something stupid and she took the drug herself which it's just makes no sense to me because literally we have a moment. It was previously in that day. They're at Austin's funeral and they're talking about the fact that he never drank or did anything, but he took the drug and he died and he overdosed. And they're talking about how like some other people have done the same. Like when they took it, they overdosed and died. And so then later that day, she decides, I'm going to take this drug that I literally just came back from a funeral where a friend of mine took it and died. That made no sense to me. Why would you, like, are you that stupid? But yeah, apparently she decides to take it. So I thought that was dumb. What I would have maybe done instead if I was writing that first issue was maybe her and Austin took it at the same time. And then maybe, maybe she took a smaller dosage. And so while Austin OD'd, she didn't. And then later on she takes it again because she's now addicted. It's a drug. She knows it's bad for her. Maybe we can see like a moment where she's like struggling not to take it, but it's just like she's having withdrawals and she has to take something and she takes it. That would have made more sense rather than she's clean as a whistle, doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, doesn't do any of this. And then all of a sudden she decides, you know what, I'm going to take this drug that I literally just came back from a funeral from a friend who took it and died. That made no sense to me. Anyways, I'm kind of rambling on that issue. So yeah, she took it, started ODing. Spider-Man um, rushes to the library to save her, and when he gets to her, she has no idea who she is. So Spider-Man's now trying to protect her while at the same time fighting these street samurai-looking characters. I don't know what to call them. Um, they kind of look like Marvel's version of the Red Hood, in a sense. So yeah, we have we have that. We have him fighting while at the same time we're having like flashbacks to to like you know the previous hour and stuff like that. So why did I call this Start, Stop, Start, Stop, Spider-Man? Because there's so much freaking writing in this. There is so much writing. Not only does Spider-Man not shut up, but there's just so many dialogue boxes uh, and descriptive boxes in every panel. So here's a panel right here that I'm going to show you. Here's two panels. This is in the middle of Spider-Man fighting. So now you see how much dialogue, or I should say how much text there is. Imagine that in every panel. So yeah, this is not nonstop. The art itself is nonstop. Like if you were to ignore all the text and just look through the art, then yeah, you have nonstop action. You have, so yeah, you have flashbacks where he's talking to uh, his friend Winters, who's, um, I guess, a reporter. I, I haven't kept up with Spider-Man since uh, one more day. Like that just ruined it for me and I've never gone back since. I've read a couple of like what ifs and non-canon one shots and stuff like that. But I haven't read the main run since. And I don't ever plan to. So I don't know who some of these characters are. I mean this isn't, I guess it, it is part of the main run since this takes place before Amazing Spider-Man issue number 61. According to um, editor's note in one of these panels. So uh, yeah, I have no idea who Winters is. It's been forever since I've read Spider-Man anyways. Like I said, I gave up after one more day. We know how long that came out. But yeah, we uh, we had them trying to figure out about this drug. And then yeah, we, we, we just get a lot of fighting with um, with Spider-Man and, and this group as they're trying to figure out this thing. Eventually, they discover that 
and there's there's hints of this. Basically, there's hints of uh, these people that Spider-Man is fighting. He's like he's holding his own, but they're giving him a tough battle, and they they almost seem to be able to predict his movements. And basically, it's because they they're they're really smart. Like they they have everything down to a science. And what Spider-Man realizes and discovers is that the drug that people are, the A-plus drug, is smoothing out people's brains and kind of stealing their, their intelligence and then giving it to this group. I don't, don't ask me how that makes sense, but basically the drug is stealing people's intelligence and then it's giving it to, the, to, to this group back. They're becoming smarter as these other students who are taking the drug are becoming dumber. And yeah, eventually we find out that the leader of this group are actually the Zapata brothers and they're two Lucha Libres, I guess. They're, they're, they're two wrestling themed uh, and they had the luchador masks and stuff like that. And this is the thing that I always find funny. First off, tell me if this sounds, um, this sounds familiar to you. So we have a wrestling theme bad guy wearing a luchador mask, two of them in this case. Um, they're very strong and powerful. They're very intelligent and they have gotten their skills from a new type of drug. Does that sound like a familiar villain to you? Maybe a villain from um, the DC comics, we would say. So yeah, these characters are basically bootleg Bane. And the thing I was going to say that, that I find kind of funny is we always see this in, in comics. Well, first off, they have to be Hispanic because, I mean, they're, they're, they're luchadors, so they have to be Hispanic, right? Anytime you, you have a wrestling-themed character, they have to be Hispanic because it's not like wrestling is big in any other part of the world, like, I don't know, Japan maybe. Um, <laughs> uh, the thing I find funny is that you always have, like, whenever you have wrestling-themed characters, they're always luchadors. Like, they're almost always luchadors. And they're always big, muscular luchadors who tend to grapple with their opponents. And it's just, like, you do know that that's not how luchadors fight, right? Like, lucha libre. I mean, I'm not saying that there's no grappling in lucha libre, because obviously there is. But lucha libre tends to be more of, um, more athletic. It tends to be more of a high-flying, flippy, spinny, huracaranas, um, tilt whirl, head scissors, sunset flips, those kind of stuff. Basically, like your Rey Mysterios. That's Lucha Libre. The whole like big, strong, muscular grappling, that could either be more of a mid south kind of style, like 80s mid south style, or maybe even catch as catch can style, which is popular in the UK. Like UK is usually catch as catch can and submission. So yeah, I just I I'm kind of like on this other tangent, but I just always find it funny that every time you have a wrestling themed character, they always have to be big, muscular, grappler with a luchador theme, and it's like that's not how luchadors fight. Like if you want a big, strong grappler, wrestling style character, make them like a catch as catch can, which is not lucha libre. Like if you want a luchador character, then they gotta be like a lot, uh, smaller, thinner flippier faster speed like that kind of like a high flyer that that's more lucha libre style and then of course japan is usually more more of a strong style i mean there's different types like you got king's road as well but japan especially with new japan um, pro wrestling is usually more of a strong style which is strikes and stuff like that but yeah i just i always find that fun kind of funny but yeah so we, we, we kind of have that. I'm not going to go too much into it. I will show a little bit more. So I'll show like maybe this page right here. And you can see all that text in the middle of a fight. You can look at all that text. And we have that in everything. The, uh, the writer for this issue, it's almost like they basically wrote a novel and they're shoving that novel into one issue worth of comic book pages. Yeah, it's just so much text. And because it slows everything down. Uh, I literally like... I have to kind of stop for a while because it's just it's so much dialogue. I mean, not just dialogue, um, but there's so much text, so much description. It's it's an info dump, and an info info dump is not it's not necessarily bad. I mean, I would try to stay away from that. Try to stay away from info dumps and exposition. But sometimes you you might need it. I mean, if you're really good at writing, you can g get away from that and still give information to the audience, but in a more natural way without exposition or info dumping on them.
but I mean, even the best of writers will have like a scene or two where they have to info dump. This is basically two issues so far of nothing but an info dumping. Like every single page is info, 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 info. And uh, it, it stops the, the flow of the comic. This is not non-stop Spider-Man. This is why I say this is start, stop, start, stop. If I were to personify this issue, it would be George Costanza's dad from Seinfeld. You know, uh, George, uh, Mr. Costanza with his halting way of speaking. That's basically what it's like. It's like, it's almost like William Shatner where it just constant pauses after every single action scene. That's what it's like to read it. Like you'll have Spider-Man going to throw a punch. So he cocks his arm back and then you have two boxes of dialogue or text. He swings his fist. Then you have another box of text. And then his fist connects. Then he has another box or two of text. And then the villain snaps his head back. And then you have another box of text. It's like, oh my God. Like one simple action and it's taking forever to get through it because I have to read every single freaking text that you have in this freaking panel. It's so annoying. <laughs> like this is a comic book. This is a visual medium. Use your visuals. You don't have to constantly shove text in my face. I'm not reading a novel, but it feels like I am. So yeah, this is how not to do a comic book. Like, I don't mind dialogue. I don't mind text. It's fine. But this is too much. This is literally like I'm having like eight boxes of dialogue. Um, or I, I, I'll have like three things of, of dialogue and then four boxes of text in one panel. This is way too much, dude. And it's not just like, okay, we have some of that. And then we have non, um, like we have pages where we have nothing. So like we can breathe a bit. It's literally like every single panel has some kind of text in it. And it's throughout the entire issue. And the first issue was like that too. And even during the, like I said, during the fight scenes, you have just nonstop text while Spider-Man is doing his thing. And it sucks because the action is actually so good. Like it, it's, it's visually i mean the artwork is okay i would say the the art style it's not really my kind of style but it's not terrible i would say it doesn't fit with this series though and i say that because this series is about young adults college students ODing on drugs so you would think you would want a art style that's a bit more serious or just more like not so childish like this this looks like a kitty art that seems like an insult when I say kitty art, but this this seems like it would be art for like a Spider-Man cartoon series, you know, like what, what it was that Spider-Man Unlimited. Like this seems like it would be like that kind of art style, but then you have them talking about drugs and ODing and stuff like that. So it just it doesn't really fit the theme. Like you want or the tone, I should say. You want you should have a more realistic art style to fit the the heavy realistic theme and tone that you have rather than you know you got a lot of colorful panels and a lot of stylish cartoony arts with this really serious theme it just doesn't fit but other than that i mean even the, like, like, I, like i was trying to say before i kind of went off into that tangent the action itself is i mean it's cool like this would be like a nice cool flowing comic like this could almost be spider-man meets crank and just like non-stop action which is like assume what they're going for if the name of the series is non-stop spider-man except the text prevents it from being non-stop it's literally like you have to take breaks from reading this because it's just so much dialogue and it just it disrupts the flow it disrupts the pacing it's annoying because you have all this cool action being broken up by all this freaking text and dialogue so yeah that's that's non-stop spider-man or as i like to call it start stop start stop spider-man what would i give this oh man it's a shame because i would like to give it more because it's interesting but i'd give it maybe a four out of ten i would say it's below average in the sense that the premise itself and the idea behind it could easily be a six or seven out of ten but the art style and too much tech interrupting the flow of everything drastically brings this down it's just if i was the editor i would have gone up to the writer and i'd be like dude we're cutting like half of this 
All right, like you don't, we don't need all this info dump. Give it more of a flow. Like I want to be able to, like if this is nonstop, I want to be able to, to go through panels pretty quickly. Like boom, boom, like a lot of cool action stuff, you know? But the fact that I have to stop and spend like two minutes on <laughs> every panel because there's so much text, uh, yeah. So that drags this down, which is a shame because there's there's promise and there's good, but it's just hidden behind an art style that, again, the art style is not bad. So like if the artist ever comes across this video for whatever reason, your art style isn't terrible. It just doesn't fit the tone of this series. The art style and the over excess use of tech really harms this series. I cannot give it a recommend because of that. I don't know, you guys tell me what you think. Have, have any of you guys been reading this? And what are your thoughts? Do you guys agree with me? Do you guys disagree with me? Like, feel free to sign off in the comments down below. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know usually I, I tend to be more positive with my reviews, but I kind of just want to be honest. I really want to enjoy this, but I just can't. And I feel like as a writer, I can maybe, I can talk about why I don't like it. And maybe anyone out there who reads it, maybe you guys can, I don't know if you guys want to take any of my advice on any of this. This is how not to write a comic. Comics are visual mediums. Use more visuals, less dialogue, don't, less text. Don't info dump constantly on every single panel. Let the reader be able to breathe a bit, you know? But uh, yeah, this is how not to write a comic. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Tell me what you guys think. Hope to see you guys next time later. So what'd you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that bell for a notification. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far. And I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see. And I hope to see you guys next time. Later.